Yeah. Hello. So I'm Stacy from Midwife for Your Life. You can find me online at midwifeforyourlife.com. That's all one word, the F-O-R, yourlife.com. And I think if you just go to the Simple Life Celebrations homepage, you could find me there, too, and it would be great to connect with you. Okay, so now I'm going to give like Katie. Hi. <laughs> I'm Katie Keys, and um, I'm going to be talking with you all tonight about essential oils and aromatherapy. And um, I have a Facebook page, River Island Apothecary, and also I sell my products online on an Etsy site, also River Island Apothecary. Okay. Hello, my name is Heather, and I'm a yoga teacher, and I teach a type of yoga called Subtle Yoga, which is um, a practice that really is accessible to anyone, folks that haven't done yoga at all. And I teach some meditation. I do not have a web page. Or, anything. <laughs> or or a Facebook yes. page. <laughs> personal profile. I have a personal profile. Yes. So we should tell them how we know these lovely yeah. ladies. Sure. Go ahead. So we met um, these three lovely ladies in North Carolina uh, last fall. We went on a Stacy's um, retreat, which was amazing, and really had an awesome time. So we wanted to share them with you guys as well. Awesome. So, um, does anybody have any questions for these guys starting off here? No? Okay. Stacy, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do then? Yeah, absolutely. You know, before um, we came on to this Skype video presentation, um, I had dinner with Katie and Heather, and we were really just talking about, you know, what helps us connect to our inner goddesses, right? What helps us connect to that part of ourselves that is our most authentic, our most... Um, just the part of ourselves that we know, um, our truth, our wisdom, our joy, our love, where that really resides. Because I think we can all get really um, distracted and really get into what I call a sort of reactive mode very often, like where we're just constantly reacting to things, right? And, um, and so I really want to share with you things that I do that really help me stay in a creative mode, right? That's what I sort of consider the opposite of, of the reactive mode. So I just want to check in first, and is my audio okay? Can you all hear me just fine? It's perfect. Okay, super. Well, so again, and this lends really nicely to the work that Heather and Katie will share with you as well, because they're all, um, they're all facets, you know, I feel, of, of this um, intentional practice that I have that I want to share with you. And so the idea really is that I want to share is that I want you to start thinking about that first hour of your day as the most important hour of your day. And I really want you to set it up so that is your time to connect to spirit. That is your time to connect with your inner wisdom, your inner goddess, right? Whatever you want to call it, but that part of you that um, loves you and wants the best for you, right? So in my thinking, um, you know, we're all, we all have busy workaday lives, we all have families, we all have, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of requests, you know, being made of our time. And so what I have found in my busy workaday life, right, with a husband, with a child, with, you know, work that I do every day, is that the only hour of the day that I really know is my own to, again, create, to really craft that hour, is that first hour of the day. And very often that means I need to set my alarm clock to go off, you know, an hour before my family wakes up. And I know that we have maybe women, I don't know, in my multi-passion mama program right now, I know that, um, is Christy out there? I think Christy had said that she was going to try to make it tonight. Did Christy make it? No, she's not here. Okay. So Christy had told me that she was going to try to make it, but Christy wakes up, some of you ladies might know her, that she wakes up at 5 o'clock in the morning, right? Because that's the only way that she knows that she's going to get that hour to herself. And for me, that's usually about 5.45 or 6 a.m. 
And for you, that may seem like, oh my gosh, that's really too early. Well, just look at your day, right? Is there another time when you can really craft that hour? But again, I'm going to maintain that it'd be a really good idea for you to look at an hour that you really could carve out first thing before the, like, the family wakes up. So for me, you know, I wake up in the morning, I can take care of the, the bathroom duty, but then the next 15 minutes, I spend doing yoga or some other sort of um, movement of it could just be sudden salutations. It doesn't have to be anything um, you know elaborate. I don't have to do a yoga routine. Again, I'm just really going to talk um, explicitly about this. But how I feel about it is that it really just helps ground me in my body, right? You know, I've just left sleep in this sort of ethereal world, and I want to ground myself in, in, in this reality, right? I just want, that's my idea, is that I'm grounding myself. And then, that's about anywhere, you, again, you can decide, but I'm looking at this hour, right? Where it takes me about, you know, 10 minutes to just sort of take care of my bathroom routine, and then 15 minutes in yoga, and then 10 minutes meditating, right? So I've done the yoga, and then I'm just going to sit for 10 minutes quietly, and I really want to um, just uh, throw away that idea, discard that idea that meditation is something that only the gurus can do, that, you know, you have to um, sequester yourself in, you know, some quiet or silent Buddhist retreat to be able to do this. For me, meditation, I just look at as that's the time when, again, I'm in conversation with myself, right? Because the thoughts just appear, like I don't have to think them, but then what I try to cultivate in that 10 minutes is my response to that thought. And sometimes it can just be like, not now, you know, I don't want to think that right now. Or sometimes it can be to engage with it a little bit. Like, what does that have to teach me, right? What is that thought trying to teach me? And so really, again, for me, it's just about being in relationship with myself, right? And I hope that you can appreciate that if you're aware of thoughts, like, where did that thought come from? Or why do I keep having those negative thoughts? Or, you know, just any of that, right? Those thoughts think themselves, and then what I want you to cultivate is that idea that there is um, an observer, or you can call it again, your inner wisdom, your best self, that responds to that thought, right? So that's what meditation means to me. For me, it's not so much trying to cultivate that um, no thought, which I think is, is how a lot of people look at meditation, but for me, it's really about being in relationship with myself and just meeting my thoughts with kindness and with um, curiosity. And, um, and, and that's, I, I think I'll leave it with that, right? And then the next thing I do, and this can take, uh, my intention is to spend at least 68 seconds because there's a lot of um, uh, evidence, but it's, it's really in this sort of woo-woo place. And I, I don't think they've done any studies in academic research, but there is belief in, in this practice of law of attraction that if you can maintain a, a positive stream of thoughts for at least 68 seconds, then that has this incredible pulling power that really can create, you know, a, a, a feeling in you of, again, positive expectation, of positive possibilities, and that's absolutely what I want to offer you. So I learned this practice from a teacher named Mike Dooley, and so that's called D-O-O-L-E-Y, and he calls it vibration activation. And I was sharing it with Katie and Heather. I don't know if you heard the sort of giggling in the background because, you know, he's kind of a goofy guy and he has like these sort of gang symbols for, for vibration activation. So what they are is like vibration activation. <laughs> help remind you from now on, like, I think you all be walking around with like, vibration, activation, and so that helps, you know, by all means, <laughs> embrace it. So what that is, is it's at least 68 seconds, right? And I have my little iPhone, it has a little stopwatch feature, and I set my timer, right? I set that stopwatch, and I don't, and I sit down with my journal, and I write for at least 68 seconds. And what I've learned is I'm very often writing for two minutes or for two minutes and 30 seconds. I wouldn't recommend doing this for more than five minutes. I think that um, 
I don't know. For me, I, I have never gone up to five minutes, so I just want to give you that framework, right? Like anyone has 68 seconds in their day. And when I'm working with my one-on-one -on -one clients, when they say to me, you know, oh, I just don't have time to meditate or I don't have time to exercise. You know, my daughter's waking up at, you know, 6.20 in the morning and, you know, I, I'm not going to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, right? So those are the things they say. And I'm like, is it possible for you, you know, to maybe put that bowl of cereal in front of your daughter and then say, mommy's going to go into her room for 68 seconds and then I'll be right back, right? Do you think any kid is not going to be okay with that? And she even said, right, she's the, this one client who I work with who really does put up a lot of, you know, like um, understandable, you know, resistance to doing these things I asked her to do. Even she was like, yes, Stacy, I can do 68 seconds of this practice, right? And, and again, just this one thing has made such a difference in her life. So for 68 seconds, you sit down, you write in a journal. I feel like it's really important that you write it out, you know, on paper, not necessarily, you know, typing it out or just thinking about it. But there's some magic in taking that pen to paper, and for 68 seconds, you're imagining your day the way you would most like it to happen. So for this morning, in fact, I wrote, I always started out with saying, today is a great day. I'm so excited that, you know, I have a morning, you know, booked with client appointments. I'm so excited to get to connect with my clients and hear how they're doing and share with them, you know, how they can create their best life. And then I'm going to pick up my son and we're going to have Mommy Finney Fun Day and it's going to be so great to connect with him and I know he's going to have had a great day of school and I can't wait to hear about that. And then I get to go out to dinner with my girlfriends and I know there's going to be margaritas involved. <laughs> So then I get to join this goddess summit, and how great is that going to be that I get to share, you know, this this time with them, right? So you can see, I'm just I'm just anticipating good things from happening, and and these things were actually in my experience. Like I really did imagine these were going to happen. But let me be clear, ladies, there have been plenty of times when I have written things that would just be called fantasy, you know, where I'm like. I'm the new best-selling Hay House author. I just sold a million books on Amazon. You know, like, I really do. Like, sometimes it's just sheer fantasy. And it really is just about, you know, I always find that there was something that, you know, I tapped into during that time of meditation that then began, became, like, the jumping off point for me to do that 68 seconds of vibration activation. So after that, you know, what I have started to do, you know, I've run several different group coaching programs, and I have this one particular forum where I then post my, you know, I call that, you know, again, the vibration activation statement, and then the other members of, of the forum, they're chiming in with, oh my gosh, and I have the best day planned, and oh my gosh, all these great things are happening, and isn't it amazing how everything's falling into place, right? So we get to celebrate that for each other. So if you want to intensify it, I would say maybe have one partner or a forum, right, from the, the goddess ladies that you have tonight, that you've set that intention that you're going to share that with each other. Because I think that that would create, again, just support and accountability for, for doing this practice that I know is really just so valuable and so powerful. So I think I'm going to leave that, I'm going to leave it at that. Again, with this idea that the first hour of your day is the most important day that you are creating your life. And that if you can just set aside, whether it's one hour or 68 seconds, to make sure that you are setting the intention for how you want your life to look and how you want it to feel, right? I hope you got that with that vibration activation. I mean, that's about setting the tone for your day. That's about creating the feeling that you want to have for the rest of the day, right? So that's what I really want to leave with you, and I'm happy to take any questions about any of that, or I'm also happy to just hand over the forum to my lovely goddesses beside me. Does anybody have any questions for Stacey at this time? Okay. Okay, great. So in the, um, I think that, who did you sort of have next in line? Did you have some idea for that? 
For, for you guys? Yeah, yeah was it Heather, Katie, Katie, did you? Does we have matter. Katie on our list. Yeah. Okay, Kate. Okay, okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Katie. We're going to sit. Yeah, you can sit. Musical chairs. Okay, hi. Go, friend. What am I talking about? Your anointing oils and archetypes and okay. all the good stuff. All that good stuff. Okay, so I think to kind of segue from what Stacy was just sharing with you all is that um, one thing that I do professionally with the, the oil blends and day-to-day, -day, I'm also a massage therapist. Sorry, Sean is crawling across the floor. <laughs> Very goddessy. Yes. Um, is I, I help people um, create sanctuary, is what I would say. Um, and I think that that's something that really helps us tap into that goddess nature that we all have is um, an aspect of knowing how to self-soothe and knowing what is sanctuary for each of us as individuals. And so offering massage therapy, of course, is a way that people can kind of escape their everyday and have some sanctuary, but these oil blends that I create do the same thing. Um, so I came up with this idea based on um, the idea of archetypes, and I wanted to look at different facets of women, and I wanted to match those facets with uh, botanical-based aromas. And so I created seven different ones, and uh, all based on my own experiences just a person in the world and match those <laughs> is guarding the goddesses. Very important. <laughs> so I created these blends um, with all essential oils and they're basically to support you in your rotations around your own many facets. So the seven archetypes that I work with are um, the girl child, the tantrika, the warrior, the mermaid, the priestess, the queen, and the wisdom keeper. And of course, we all have more archetypes than that, and I list um, in the booklet that I sell, I list synonyms to go with those particular archetypes in case those words don't quite resonate. But I blended them so that in delving into your sense of smell, you're kind of allowing yourself to hone in and focus on an aspect of yourself that you might otherwise be slightly distracted from because of your driving or your paying bills or something, you know, mundane like that. But it kind of, the, the sense of smell is so magical and it really helps you helps you to kind of transport away from the mundane. Um, as soon as you smell an aroma, I mean, all of you probably have this experience where something that you smell will take you back to, like, an experience that you had in childhood or um, a, a beautiful moment that you had, and all you have to do is smell the candle or smell the wine or whatever it was that you had in that moment, and then you're instantly transported. And what my goal is, is to create these tools to help you transport to a sanctuary. And so at times your sanctuary might be working with a girl child, which is the way that you embody joy and embrace playfulness and happiness. Other times your sanctuary might be um, remembering that you're a wisdom keeper and that you know things without having to know why or how you know. Um, of course, we all find sanctuary in being a tantrika from time to time, of course, <laughs> so um, there's that, but um, anyway, so that, that's, that's a lot of my work is that um, knowing that as goddesses, you, you need sanctuary. It's not just up to your devotees to create sanctuary for you. You have to know what that is for yourself. It's a, it's a way of self-soothing. It's a way of being as big as you can be to to create things that you do for yourself so that you're not just relying on other people to make you feel better. And the tools that I have to offer 
to assist in that are these aromas. Um, and again, I have seven essential, or excuse me, seven anointing oils that I make, plus bathing salts and dusting powders and all these other beautiful things. And they're all botanicals so that there's no um, irritation from synthetics or anything like that. So it's just, you know, working with the planet and um, all the botanicals and all of that. So I guess that's what I'll leave you with is um, spend some time discovering what your sanctuary is personally and discovering what tools are most helpful to you for getting there. So, for instance, with the aromas, you know, you might be in a busy airport or something like that, but you pull out this aroma and suddenly you're in this sanctuary place where you can think and you can slow down and you can have an emotional response or whatever you need and then, then you're right back into dealing with reality. So so I think I think that's that's what I have to say. Was that good? That was awesome. Thanks, okay. Katie. This is water. This is not moonshine. <laughs> Aw, you yeah, disappoint no, you me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, passing Heather on. She's on her way. Thank you. How do you obtain her product? We can get them online. All so, all sorry, there was a question, Katie, on how you can obtain some of your anointing oils. Oh, thanks for asking. Um, all of my products are for sale on Etsy right now. It's E-T-S-Y. And Etsy is a great big website for all things handmade. So you would go to Etsy.com and then you would search for River Island Apothecary. I think you could also search Katie Keys, which is K-A-T-I-E-K-E-Y-E-S. So that's the main way to get them. Or come to North Carolina. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? Does she ship to Canada? You'll ship to Canada, right? Of course, yeah. Okay. I just shipped an order to Thailand a few weeks ago, so Canada's like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Chris and I should have brought your aromatherapy. I don't know. All we have is Tantrika, though, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, ladies. Don't, don't start passing that out. No. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Any more questions for Katie? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. 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 That's okay. We'll say A a lot. <laughs> You're welcome, eh? Canadian A. We've got our toques for sale, A. Eh? <laughs> hi, Heather. Do you want to? Hi. I think Griffin <laughs> might be one of the Jerry wanting to say hi. <laughs> So it's just me. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, here he is. Where is it? You have to look at Hello. the green. You have to look at the green. Oh, there's Griffin. Hi, buddy. Griffin. <laughs> Hi. Here, I'll take Can you tell me if you there's another country? Oh, it's so great. Okay, say bye. Bye. Bye, Griffin. That's you have to go. You've just blown his mind, ladies. He was like, oh my gosh, you're talking to all these ladies? Yeah. Well, he can see what you see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome, Heather. Hello. Hi. Heather just got back from an amazing girls' vacation. I did. <laughs> Looked very nice. So can you tell us about... Um, yoga and meditation and how to get started because yeah. that was a big thing for Crystal and I when we met you we we weren't very good at yoga or meditation at all you may have noticed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me especially or I'm not even talking to you me especially oh, I, I saw your body <laughs> 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 um, yeah so if you want to talk about that Heather that'd be great sure thing so for me meditation has always been a really difficult thing to do. And I think for most people it probably is because you think you have to sit somewhere and your mind has to be quiet and has to be still and that you get to this like amazing place and well that would never happen for me and so I would just say well I just can't meditate and I just can't do this and I don't have time and 
You know, I found that it's just kind of like anything. Like if you want to start an exercise program or you want to learn how to cook something really well or you want to um, learn how to play an instrument, you have to really practice at it and you have to not be really good at it for a while. And, um, and you have to make time for it. And I have a four, now five-year-old little boy as of yesterday who wakes before the sun rises and was never a sleeper. And so have been pretty sleep deprived since he's been born <laughs> and so I've always questioned like well how can I even like fit in meditation or fit in yoga and I've been doing yoga for about 15 years and um, but couldn't really figure out how to meditate once I became a mom and um, what I, what I found is pretty much like what Stacy has said. I have to carve it. The only time that I really kind of know is mine, where I'm not completely depleted of everything, is first thing in the morning. And the idea of if my child wakes up at 5:30, that what does that mean? I have to wake up at 4:30 in the morning, and I could not even fathom that, like the first two years of his life. And so. Um, what I started to do was yoga in bed. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that. I don't think it's on a YouTube video. <laughs> but he's, uh, right, right, right. So um, he's one of the, I have a really old house that has really creaky old floors, and he has like these ears that can hear anything. And so I would get out of bed, or he would just wake up. So I pretty much just came up with a couple yoga postures that were laying on your back that I would do to transition from like sleep state to awake state and just like Stacy said it's this, this really I really missed having some time to myself before having to be extremely on as like mom and responding to everything and so there's just about three poses that I have been doing for about five years every morning and I'll just lay in bed and one's just like a really long stretch and another one is a like a head to toe pose that you do while you're laying on the back, another is a spinal twist and you know it takes me about ten minutes and I you know he's not as, I'm not stuck now but um, I think I would recommend, like when you first get up in the morning, if um, after you do the bathroom thing, but like I couldn't even go to the bathroom because it would wake you up. <laughs> so I think ladies, you just do what you have to do. And um, so ideally I'd go to the bathroom if I didn't have to wake my child up. And then I would pick like maybe three poses that you could do and just really, you can even do them in like five minutes. And you just like get in the habit of doing it. And find poses that feel like good to you, that speak to you, that wake your body up in the morning, that help you transition from sleep state to, to this awake world. And um, it allows you to become aware and, and to notice. And I think that's a big part of yoga and meditation, just awareness and noticing. And um, so the next thing after I would do that is I would sit and I would meditate. And I first tried to just meditate for five minutes. And I would sit comfortably. And I'd sit. I wouldn't lay down. I'd, rec I'd, I'd recommend if you're doing meditations to sit. Um, and if you can sit without being sitting in a chair, it's probably better to kind of have to support yourself in it. And to sit on just a some pillows. You could sit like cross-legged and if it feels really uncomfortable to do that, you can put like pillows underneath your, your knees. You can put your hands in your lap. If that feels awkward, you can put a pillow under your hands. You just want to be comfortable and you just want to make it really simple and easy. And maybe just first pay attention to your belly. Like when you breathe, how the belly expands and how the belly contracts. Or you might want to pay attention to a sensation of the um, breath when it comes in your nose and when it comes out. And just choose one, just don't go back and forth thinking one's going to be easier than the other. Um, and what will happen is all these thoughts will come in your head like your to-do list for the day or what you should be doing and all the stuff or fear and fret. And, and just notice, oh, I'm planning today's day or oh, I'm freaked out that I've forgotten this. And all those thoughts happen. I mean. 
That's what happens in meditation. You just start to become aware of those things. And then, and then it'll start to kind of ease up and your mind will really start to, all that talk, the words and the images that come up will start to lessen. And then you'll get into this space that feels a little floaty, that feels open, that makes your heart kind of be more compassionate. And I know that sounds kind of flaky, but it starts to happen. And to the point where when I started regularly meditating, I noticed that I had just a lot more patience for my family, for my child, for my husband, to the point where even they would be like, on days that I didn't, they would say, mommy didn't meditate today. <laughs> and my husband would say, why don't you go back upstairs? And I'm like, no, I don't have time for that. He was like, we need you to have time for that right now. Uh, and I would choose a time of the day that you can be consistent with it. And it's just, just setting up a pattern. And so like, if the time of the day for you is when you're at work and it's um, before you're right at the beginning of your lunch break or something like that, then just allow yourself five minutes to do that and do it every day. And just start the first week for just five minutes. And you don't have to be like, oh, there's no way I could do a long, hour long meditation. Well, I don't do hour long meditations either. That just isn't my reality. But I find even like when my child goes to like a part time preschool, and some days I would go to the preschool 10 minutes beforehand and I would sit in the car and meditate because I knew I did that three times a day at that, I mean, three times a week at that time. And it was my time, and it was quiet, and it was warm, and it really was effortless for me. And it was just, I never would have guessed I'd be meditating in the car pickup line for my child, and it was really how I fit it into my life. And so I don't sit and do yoga and meditate with candles and beautiful music and quiet. If I could, I really like it when I get to do that. When I teach yoga classes to people, I kind of set the whole scene like that because that really satisfies me as well. But it really is possible. And um, it's just kind of just showing up and allowing yourself to become aware and still and not mad or frustrated with yourself with all the stuff that comes up. That's just normal. Do you have any questions? Actually, I have a comment. Sure. Um, for the last uh, four months, four or five months, I've actually been doing meditation, and yeah. I've got ADHD, and I've been told that uh, anybody that has ADHD, we're not able to meditate. I was right into meditation just about the first time I started it, uh -huh. and I've been doing it for, yeah, five, oh, five months, and it actually is really, really, really good. Oh, that's really wonderful. I mean, it really is used for like so many different things. There's been a lot of studies in the past couple years where neurologists study people, they, they've taken x-rays or scans or MRIs or whatever of people's brains prior to, um, and, <laughs> and then doing meditation for like a consistent period of time for like a year and then taking those scans again and that it, the brain actually physically changes from meditating. So it's not just this science anymore that's believed to be more like a heart or emotional, that it actually has physical effects in the physical, social, emotional body. So that's really wonderful. What have, what have you found to be the most helpful thing for meditating? Um, well, listening to um, well, a friend of mine here, Brandy, helped me out quite a bit. Um, guided meditation with uh, um, uh, singing bowls and mm -hmm. crystals and, and stuff like that. Um, right. I was told to use medication. I tried it a couple times, absolutely didn't work, and I went to meditation instead. And it worked much better. That's, uh, absolutely. That's great. That's great. So there are other types of meditation too, because we all learn in really different ways. And so you might find like for yourself that you might respond better to doing a guided meditation. And so there's 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 one called like the soft belly meditation or the grounding cord meditation. And you could just kind of write those down. You could Google that on the web and probably find 
a YouTube video or someone orally going over those meditations, and those are really great. They're, one's called the grounding cord, and the other is the soft belly meditation. Um, those you could just do regularly, you could listen to, and that gives you a point of focus, and they're really powerful meditations um, that work with emotional states in your body. And for me, meditation took several different things. Like I, I had to listen to meditations, I had to read about them, I had to see videos because I just was really, um, I kind of thought having it as a practice and felt like I couldn't do it. But coming into it in a, several different ways, I just finally got it. And I finally got it by just doing it as well. So just to encourage you to try and keep trying and showing up. And, um, you know, yoga is a practice of a moving meditation. And that there's other ways to meditate too that access that part of the brain. A lot of people that spend time doing um, creative work that doesn't, that no longer involves the plotting and planning of it, but where it actually becomes ease within that creativity, that that is a type of meditation as well. And so you may find that, that you do that in a way. Um, so any other questions? Well, Heather, I just wanted to say, we, Sean and I were just talking, and we both at the same time said, we missed your voice. It's so oh. soothing. <laughs> we have to um, bottle that up or something. But um, do we have more questions? I do have one for Katie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So... What inspires you to make your anointing oils, and how do you go about making them? Good questions. Um, well, the original seven um, that I have now, I was first inspired by the idea of archetypes themselves. So I had the kind of conceptual idea first um, about working with these archetypes in celebration of our multifaceted nature instead of a fragmented nature. So I identified the archetypes I wanted to work with first and then I started working with how I wanted each of those archetypes to smell. And so for instance, like the mermaid, um, my first thought was I want the mermaid to smell kind of weird and deep and green. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and so um, I started just with that concept And then I pull you, so I have an apothecary that I work in, and all my essential oils are there, and so I just pulled out all the different individual oils that I thought might go well. And then I also cross-referenced quite a bit with, um, for instance, Robbie Zek's work, where she, she works with um, aromatic kinesiology, where she's putting uh, essential oils with emotional correspondences so I like, for instance, um, with the mermaid. You know, I knew that bravery was going to be a big part of this, and also um, kind of a psychic nature, and and also sort of a rebellious nature. And so I cross-referenced um, the oils that I thought were going to go into it with the work of other people. And then once I had all of my kind of cognitive information together in a little sketchbook, I just started dropping oils into a bottle and I have a little homemade book that a friend made for me and I just started recording my results and my recipes and then I blended the oils together and let them sit for about a month to see how they were going to marry and then uh, tweaked here and there how I needed them to be different and then and then went from there and started bottling them so and the thing about all of the archetype oils is, and, and everything I make really because it's botanical, I always say that you are the last ingredient, which is kind of cheeky, but it, it's true. It's, you know, botanicals are able to marry with our chemistries as well, so the mermaid will smell differently on me than it will on you. And so I think that's a really special component to these botanical aromas, is that we all add something to them. So not only are they you know, augmenting our lives, we're adding something to this experience, this aroma as well. So 
How was that for an answer? <laughs> did Did you want anything more specific about how to blend, or was that good? No, that was perfect. Okay, good. because it's just a carbon-based thing like we are. And so my suggestion would be to um, very gently introduce botanical aromas to the people in your office who are experiencing the sensitivity and introduce it in the form of like a drop of the aroma on a cotton ball, like something that can be easily removed in case there is a reaction. So in other words, like don't spray up the room or like, you know, get a diffuser going where they can't escape <laughs> the environment um, and just see if they have the same reaction. Um, with my massage clients, for sure, I've noticed that uh, people who say that they're very sensitive are just fine with the botanical aromas. So it's a matter of experimenting and respecting the results. Because, you know, a lot of people are just gun shy at this point and they think anything that smells is going to trigger something. And so to be respectful of that, for sure. So, there you have it. Thank you. Thank you. So, any more questions before we wrap up with the goddesses here? So, just quickly, if each of you could answer this one question, what's your one tip for finding happiness? One tip. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my big thing about, um, you know, finding happiness is, is to look for it, right? I mean, it's all around you, and you just need to pay attention. And so, you know, when I have a client who says that, you know, she doesn't know what her purpose is, or she doesn't know what makes her happy, I just really ask her to be like an investigative journalist. You know, really ask her to get one of those little notepads with a little spiral, you know, wire at the top, and walk around with a little pen and paper and just pay attention to what she is noticing, right? What brings her delight. And I really do believe in looking, you will find it. And another thing that I encourage women to do, or men, you know, and my clients to do, is every night before going to bed, to write a question. You know, I call it the dream question. And I really encourage, like, what do I really, really want, right? What is going to bring me happiness? What is going to, you know, um, just light me up? What is going to get me in the flow? And I feel like if you can just turn that over, you know, to your subconscious and your unconscious mind, you know, there's a little part of your brain called the reticular activating system, and it's the gatekeeper for your consciousness. And it's, it's filtering, it's sifting you know, millions of pieces of information every day. But if you tell it what to look for, it will work for you and it will find it. And so that's what I would say is if you really if you really don't know what brings you happiness, 
just start asking, you know, just start paying attention, just start looking, and you will find it. So I'll leave you with that. And I would have to say, like, something similar, because, I mean, there certainly have been parts, points in my life where I was just kind of running after things, just trying to grasp that something bigger and better and more thrilling. And... I think if you just take the, if you just start to allow yourself to notice more and to create some awareness and being open to awareness, that you will actually notice opportunities for happiness and joy and connection. I think connection is also a key thing with with yourself and other people in this world. And. Um, by just creating that sort of spaciousness that you really can find joy instead of just running after it and trying to find it all the time. And um, and then you can just also leave the country and go on a really fun trip with your girl. <laughs> <laughs> that will always work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess I would kind of summarize all that up to say that just be accepting of when it comes. You know, if if you've got any kind of resistance to being happy, you start there. You know, like the the plane is going to Cancun, but you have to get on it. <laughs> so <laughs> accept it when it comes. Let happiness wash all over you and drink it in. Breathe it in and soak it up and accept it. And that's that's a skill set in itself is accepting what is offered to you. Um, I know that as a professional giver, it is very difficult often to switch gears and receive. And whether you're a professional giver or not, everyone is a giver. And so just to give yourself an opportunity to switch gears and receive as well as you give, um, it's that old thing about like when you're on an airplane. Uh, you know, you need to put the oxygen on yourself before you put it on the person next to you because if you don't have any oxygen, you're not helpful to anyone else. So working on your capacity to receive that happiness when it comes is the only way you're going to experience it. So. <laughs> there you have it. From the mouths of goddesses. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, ladies. Crystal and I are so excited to have had you here to, with us tonight, and I know everybody would have got something great out of it. So. Well, it's such an honor. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, ladies. <laughs> you, you too. You too. Good night. Bye-bye.